Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Queen Sugar. So today I have a pick a file reading that was inspired by Cherry Chantress. So she did this on her channel a few months back and I enjoyed it. I thought it was a great video. And so I felt called to do it as well. And I'm excited to do it. So this reading is a little bit different because it takes a stand on Oracle Tarot and psychology. So according to Dr. Chapman, there are five primary love languages that people speak. And those five love languages are acts of service, words of affirmation, receiving gifts, quality time, and physical touch. So understanding your love language and your partner's love language will you know, help both of you understand how each of you want and need to feel loved and valued in a relationship with one another. So it is okay if you have different love languages from your partner. It doesn't mean like you two aren't compatible or anything. It just means that there are unique styles and expectations in terms of love languages and which can make your partnership better. Okay. So I feel that um, as you learn more about your low, your own love languages and your person's love language, you'll be able to get like a little insight on how things can progress within a connection. So in this reading, I touch on some love languages of uh, theirs and also a little bit um, that might be shared with the both of you. And I also want to point out that each pile will have a love language that is not technically one of the five that I listed earlier, but you can... Um, put them in a category under those top of those five that I mentioned earlier. Um, so when you get to your pile and you all let you know what love language it is, you can kind of decide if you want to just keep it separate or, you know, put it under one of the groups as well, if you feel so inclined to do so. So let's start our meditation part and get started with our reading. So take a moment to kind of just silence your mind, make sure you silence your phone, you're in a space where you won't be distracted for like a, a minute or so. So you can meditate and just start to let go of any running thoughts and allow your mind to be at peace and relax. Take a moment to take a deep breath in and take a deep breath out. Let's do that again. Take a deep breath in and then take a deep breath out. Now I want you to feel the person's energy guiding you to the door or doors that best represent the messages that they have for you regarding love languages. We will go through the love languages and grab love notes from this person as well. So make sure you allow their energy to guide you. Our first door is the pink door. Our second door is the blue door. And our third door is the green door. Once you have decided on your door or door, feel free to click the timestamp below to watch your portion of the video. As always, I appreciate your support and interest in the videos that you show. And I thank you all. This will be for those that selected pile number one, which is the pink door. So let's see what cards we get and then we'll kind of get a feel for the love languages for you and your partner. And at the very end, we'll get some love messages as well. All right, so our first card is number 24, focus on love. Look for the good in everyone. And number 46, spend quality time together, listen and talk to each other. So we already know what one of the love languages is going to be. Number 48, demonstrate love. Find out what is important to those you love and act on it. Number 16, love is all around you. There is love everywhere all the time. Simply acknowledge this as a truth. Let's go these over. We have the Ten of Pentacles. We have the moon, the knight of pentacles, the seven of swords or the seven of wands, forgiveness and healing, 
Twin Flame. Sweet Kiss. And then finally, we have Transformation. And then I'll get into my Black Hollywood Romance Oracle deck towards the end once we kind of go through and get the love languages. Okay. So right off the back, one of the first love languages that I see is quality time. I get that the quality time love language is actually connected to both of you. So it is both of your love language um, in terms of who it belongs to. It's both of your love languages. And with the quality time, this is about being able to give each other your undivided attention, right? Understanding and knowing when to take a break from work or just other projects and spending that quality time with one another. You know, when you don't get the proper or engage uh, alone time with your person, you often feel neglected or you feel unappreciated or you feel like um, there's no spark in that connection or in that relationship anymore because you're drifting apart because you're not spending that time with one another and deepening the connection. And so I feel like what would be great um, would be, you know, planning dates, whether it be indoors, outdoors, or virtually, um, and you can start by setting aside a block time for each other, you know, like a date night where it's like, okay, every Thursday or um, every third Friday of the month, we do date night and make sure that you hold each other accountable and you hold time for that commitment and you're committed to doing that because dating each other is something that never ends. It should never end. doesn't matter how long you've been with the person because at the end of the day, you know, you always want to feel like you are connected with your person and you're still growing and learning with the one another. You know, like even when you're married, if you've been married for 30 years, you still should have date nights. You still should have some type of like time together um, in addition to the time that you already spend together. That way, that connection and that um, intimacy still grows and it's still there. It doesn't leave. Okay. The next, um, the next love language I am getting is more so connected to them, and this is their love language. I would say it is acts of service. So with this, demonstrate love. I feel that this person definitely appreciates, um, you know, little actions uh, mean a lot to them. So. If you know they had like a really stressful day at work and um, you know like what their favorite snack is or whatever, I'm getting like just if you were to give them like that snack or have something ready for them to like nibble on or enjoy when they come back home from work or just have like a really rough day, that would be great. Um, I'm also getting like they enjoy, you know, help when they don't have to ask for it. So in a sense of sometimes people don't, sometimes people need help, but they don't know how to actually say like, hey, I actually need help from you or I need some type of um, advice or guidance. So being there and being available whenever that is, is helpful for them because they don't know how to do that, like how to actually um, ask for it is what I'm getting as well. So that's one of their love languages. All right, um, let's see what else we can do. Let's get into the next cards. All right, so we have butterflies. Enjoy the overwhelming excitement and bliss of new or old love. So I know these cards won't all fit on the screen, so I'm just gonna show you all and then put them over in different spots. Spiritual awakening. Your partner is sensing that there is something profoundly important about this connection. So I'll put this next to Twin Flame. Life partner. This is someone that you can enjoy life with wholeheartedly. 
you two can get through anything together. Exciting news. Good news is coming your way, whether it be a pregnancy, an engagement, or moving in together. Get excited to celebrate. Emotional support. Now is the time to check in with your emotions and your partner's thoughts and feelings. And then watch out. This is a warning message. Be aware of gossip, gossip, envy, and jealousy. Someone or something is trying to stand in the way of this connection. I'm going to put this by the seven of wands. Okay. So in terms of like additional love languages that I'm getting about this person and like you guys in general. I definitely see words of affirmation being both of your love languages as well. And with the love is all around you card, like hearing the words, I love you matter, a reminder of love, but also being shown and backed up with action. So that kind of goes into demonstrate love as well, the acts of service. And I get this visual of like both of you sitting in bed and just looking at each other and noticing how much love is there between you and your partner. Um, like through the hardships, through the, you know, the joys, the highs and the lows, there's so much love here and just hearing the words, I love you and that you matter to me. I'm proud of you. Things like that really speak to both of you. Like you want to hear that. You don't necessarily have to hear it every single day, but, um, you want it to be known and, um, you don't want to ever forget it. Like you want to know that you are loved and appreciated by this person. And also you want to see it in their actions. And that's something that they want to see as well. Like they want to hear it and they want to see it. I can see this person not often hearing it growing up. And so that plays a huge um, role in like why this is one of their love languages as well. I also see with like the transformation and the sweet kiss card. This is giving me the vibe that this person definitely wants to hear compliments and you probably want to hear the compliments as well too like complimenting each other's personalities and like your physical body like appearance sometimes you might feel self-conscious but your person will embrace your areas you try to hide by giving you compliments and words of encouragement so like you know he's kissing on her shoulder and like hugging her waist so maybe you know there might be parts of you that you're nervous about but they love it they love you for who you are and how you look um, and just like your beautiful soul, I also get that this person also wants to hear things like, you know, oh my gosh, baby, you're so strong. Or, you know, I love how dedicated you are to your work in our relationship. Like things like that. They want to hear, um, affirmations and my apologies about that. For some reason, the video cut off, but I was also going to get into another love language that I see. So this one is not one of the five that we traditionally see, but you can put it under another category. So I get that one of their love languages is being um, a protector and yours could match theirs in a sense of feeling protected is one of your love languages as well. And so they like to be able to I'm going to move these over the seven of wands and the watch out. They like to be able to protect you and to defend you. They want to feel like they are defending you and your honor and being there when you need them to be. This is really big for them. They want to be the person that you come to um, when things get rough. But also when you feel scared, when you feel nervous, they want to be that kind of quote unquote, like, you know, savior or like your warrior in a way. And I feel that this is why protection is really big for this person, because they want to make sure that you're always safe, that you never feel like you're alone and there's nothing for you to worry about. I'm also getting with the affirmation or words of affirmations I should say that they want to be able to feel supported emotionally and that could be another thing for the acts of service as well too so being an emotional support system for them so that connects to kind of like the two love languages 
um, especially when things are rough for them, because I get that this person doesn't always know how to, you know, um, digest what they're going through. So they might like let it build up. But when you're there and you're being that emotional support system, they're able to communicate better about what they're experiencing, what they're feeling. And that helps them process everything and kind of like move forward. I also love how we have life partner, we have the Ten of Pentacles, and we have the Twin Flame here. And I feel like this just represents in spiritual awakening, like both of you are in this connection and will learn a lot spiritually with one another. And I feel that over time, your spirituality grows and it strengthens and also like your energetic connection becomes stronger and like literally like you're already in tune, but you're going to become more and more in tune over time. Like they can literally know what you're about to say next or thinking what you're um, know what you're thinking, what you're feeling like they can sense it um, as well. I do get that this person definitely they might be a little bit slow to open up in the beginning, but like once they feel safe, um, they become an open book. Like they are going to be so open with you and just full of love and ready to explore the love with you. I'm definitely getting the vibe that there's going to be so many opportunities of exciting news, you know, like you all getting a new house together, having children, building a business together, you know, building a wonderful life filled with love and abundance and prosperity, you know, and good communication and just closeness, you know, I'm definitely getting also that this person has waited a long time to be in something like this that is fulfilling, that is, you know, perfect in a way like for them and like, you know, for you, you're going to feel that way about them as well. I get that you're both just destined to be together. Um, your souls just are aligned with one another. It is a beautiful, beautiful spiritual connection here and unique because of the balance that you two bring into each other's lives. That's what I'm getting as well. I'm trying to see if I get anything else about the per the person that we are interested in here. Um, I just feel like this person has so much love that they want to give, that they're ready to share. They're ready to start a family. They're ready to build a family, to grow one. Like they want, when you two are together, they want the world to look at you all like, wow, they really do love each other. This connection is definitely filled with love. That's what I'm getting as well. This person works very hard too. Like they are about their business as well. Okay. All right. So I think that's what we got here for the Oracle card. So now let's get into some love messages from this person. So we're going to start out with some from Cherries. Enchant it embrace deck. We have Are You Real? So this person, like when you guys meet, they're probably gonna be like, Oh my gosh, this is like the perfect person for me. Are they really real? Like, am I imagining things? What's the catch? Kind of like that. Um, you might feel that way about them too. Let's see what else we get. Oh, we have you are so beautiful to me. Look at that. Beautiful. I want to write your name in the sky. They want to tell the world like what they found. So the one that flipped over that we see is can you feel my love? I will be honored to meet you. I just want you to know who I am. I'm sorry I couldn't get to you. So maybe for some of you, you actually know this person. Um, you may have met them in passing or they have seen you a lot in passing, but they just never built the courage up to say anything to you. And so they finally built up the courage to say something and introduce themselves or 
um, this could be connected to like a past life where they didn't get to you in time in that past life. And so this lifetime, their goal is to make sure that they reach you. All right, let's get some more love languages or um, love notes. All right, let's get some more love notes. We have, you are truly something special. We should talk about everything and clear the air. So kind of once again with that effort, um, words of affirmation and communication, like this person definitely enjoys talking about things, working things out um, and like clearing the air. So there's no miscommunications because that's one of the biggest downfalls when it comes to just relationships in general, whether it be a friendship or a romantic relationship, is that there's often miscommunications or misunderstandings. So it's very important for this person to make sure that both parties are understood and everyone gets out what they needed to say, but get it out in a respectful way. Let's see what else we get. We have, I hope that you like me just as much as I like you. So that, like, maybe this person is a little bit shy too, because we do have like, I'll be honored to meet you. I just want you to know who I am. We have, I need to let my ex go, that pain still lingers. So with the forgiveness and healing card being over there, I feel that this person, when you meet them, they will have gotten over their ex. They will have healed um, and forgiven their ex and just forgiven other people in their life too. And that could be why, you know, they might be a little guarded sometimes or like I mentioned before, they're going to be a little slow to open up, but over time they become an open book. So that's basically um, where we get that energy from. Let's get a few more. Oh my gosh, put these back. Let's get a few more. I'm so proud to be yours. And then, can I spend my life with you? Beautiful, I love that. All right, Spirit wants me to get my other deck as well, too. So we're going to get some more love messages. Maybe this pile just has like a lot that they want to say. So let's get the first edition of love notes. Let's see what else. Oh, my gosh, so many. <laughs> it's a little bit too many, but we'll, we'll just take them. All right, I pray to God to save you for me. Does that offer still stand? A stand? I can't seem to find the right words to say to you. Please don't cry or be sad because of me. I'm sorry for all the pain that I caused you. I need you to know that it hurts me knowing that I hurt you. So maybe this person, I feel like this is more so past life energy. Like I said, they couldn't get to you before. And maybe in the past life you waited for them to arrive, but they couldn't get to you. And that was like, you know, that caused pain because you wanted to be with them. I never knew what love was until you showed me. You are my answer prayer. And then what's going on with us. So I feel like with these, with the, the pink ones, this is more so connected to past life. And so now they're finally able to get to you in this lifetime. And that is going to allow you all to work towards your connection. And then for some of you, this might just be connected to someone that you currently know. And they're in a space where like, you know, they want to move on from it. They want to clear up the air. They want to resolve the issue. Like there might have been a miscommunication. And so once they're able to do that, you all can move forward. Okay. So that is what I have for this pile for those that selected the pink door. So in terms of love languages, I hope that resonated with you all and made sense. And you know, like over time, sometimes your love languages can change. So maybe you, you know, had a love language before and 
you know, now you're like into another phase where like you have a different love language or you still have the same love languages. That's totally fine. That's totally normal. Um, so yeah, that is what I have for this pile. I hope this resonated with you all and that you enjoyed it. I wish you all the best. And okay, before I end up finishing the video, Twin Flame wanted to say something. Um, somebody's twin or divine counterpart, this is like, this is where this is coming from too. So maybe some of you are in separation with a twin or with someone and now they're just communicating strongly right now about what they're feeling. Okay, the, the twin wanted me to say that. So that's for somebody that's listening to the video. All right, this is the end of the video. I wish you all the best. Blessings and love. Alrighty, this will be for those that selected the blue pile. So let's see what cards we have and then we'll get a sense of the love languages of this person and of you as well. All right, so we're gonna start off with the Whispers of Love Oracle card. All right, so our first card is number 42. Rest and relaxation is essential. We all have a fundamental need to take a break. Number 25, romance. Lavish the one you love with personal attention and affection. Number 27, spiritual connection. A relationship has a connection that goes beyond this lifetime. So there's definitely like some past life energy here. Number 23, take a chance on love. When we love, our lives are changed forever. So I see the common num number in like all of these cards is two. So two, two, two could be like your spirit number. Um, about this connection, about this person. So if you don't know the person, um, you have like no idea who it will be. Maybe when you see 222 two, two, or 2222, two, 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 that is like a message from the universe letting you know that this person is coming in. I'm also seeing that the number um, seven is significant to this connection as well. So those could be your spirit numbers. So whether you see like multiples of twos or multiples of sevens, or you see 2727, two, seven, that could be a message from the universe. All right, now let's get into some tarot cards as well. So we have the Queen of Pentacles. We have the Page of Cups. We have the Two of Swords. We have the Six of Swords. And then we have the Justice card. All right, and then we'll get into my melanin and romance oracle cards. And then at the end, I'll get into the the Black Hollywood Romance Stars oracle deck and the love notes. All right, so we have stability. I'm just gonna put this over here. We have passion. We have communication and then dreams. Okay, so let's look into what love languages that we get here. All right, I'm actually going to start off with words of affirmation is a love language that belongs to you and this person, actually. So I'm getting that communication, honestly, is huge for this person communication is big it is deeper than just hearing how much you are loved or how much you love them it's about healthy communication and um either you or your person both come from a family where you didn't see a lot of healthy communication it was just basically non-existent and that leads to your desire to like wanting um to have a partner in a relationship that knows how to demonstrate healthy communication express themselves in a manner that is respectful and um healthy there's no abuse of language or like yelling you know I'm, I'm getting that it feels safe the communication feels safe it is something that this person has dreamt about for a long time like wanting to be um with someone that knows how to communicate effectively and well and they know how to do that too like I'm getting this person has definitely um 
been to therapy about it because it affected them when they were a child. They heard their parents yelling a lot and just like a lot of disagreements with their parents. Their parents could have gotten a divorce or just been separated. And then, you know, whenever they would see each other, it was like a, you know, a disaster basically. And I get that this person does not want to see that or have that happen to them or their future kids. And that could be something you experience as well too. And it's important for you to have like this balance in terms of, you know, communicating with one another and hearing each other out and listening. It's like that balance of listening and um, reflecting, hearing, and then responding, right? The next thing that I'm getting in terms of the love language, so this is more so of their love language. And this one I'm getting is not in the category of like the five, uh, but you can put it in the category if needed. But stability, stability is a love language of theirs. It is a huge love language for them. And I get once again, that's connected to like their childhood um, needing that stability and that balance and that consistency. They are a person that doesn't like a lot of surprises. Um, and I feel like this person may have moved a lot, like place to place when they were younger, or they never really felt that they had a home, right? And they desire a place where they feel safe and that is their home, a place that was the same for a long period of time for them. They always wanted that as a child, but they never really got it. And so I feel like this person desires a forever home with their forever person. And that could be something that you want as well. So you could have been a person that maybe you did have like a stable home or like you lived in the same house for a while, but there was a lot of inconsistencies. There was a lot of um, in and out energy. Maybe it could have been from a parent and that is something that you could desire as well. But I get for them, stability is a huge um, love language for them. They might have like strong earth placements as well. And that could be one of the reasons why that is huge. Let's see what else do we get in terms of love languages. I'm getting that quality time is one of your love languages. Now, with that, that's connected to like being able to give someone your undivided attention and knowing when to take a break from like social media or like being on your phones or technology. Because you see like in this Two of Swords card, they're, in, they're on their phones. And I don't know what she's doing on hers, but you can see this person, the guy, he's texting. So they could be texting each other. They could be texting different people. But the energy of knowing how to communicate face to face, knowing how to communicate in a way. Um, oh, you know what? I don't even want to say face to face, knowing how to just communicate overall where you guys see each other eye to eye. And sometimes maybe there could be miscommunications with texting. Like, you know, it might be better just to pick up the phone and call. But going back to the, the quality time, um, that could be a thing too where like, you don't want your person always on their phone or um, you shouldn't be on your phone like when you all are on your date night. So knowing when to kind of like take that time away from social media and from the phones and just focus on each other. Um, literally nothing else matters at that moment but them and but you. So kind of making sure that both of you recapture the romance whenever you are enjoying each other's company in a um, date night. I know that date night should always be a thing no matter how many kids or hours are spent at work. It should be a dedicated time. So how often you do it is up to you and your partner. But remembering to keep that time as part of your routine. And just knowing that when you plan date nights, it can also lead into like those healthy communication conversations or like those heart to heart conversations. And I think what will be kind of fun for like date night ideas is like each person gets an allotted amount of money and then they have to plan something you know, for the date night. So let's say you're like, okay, each of us gets $50. We have to plan something for $50. And it's just like a fun activity or a date night um, that one person creates like for the first round of the date night. And then the next person does the other round. And there's just like this spontaneity and like fun that, you know, you both get to enjoy is what I'm getting. Another um, love language that I'm feeling for this person is definitely physical touch because we got passion, we got stability, and that's their that's one of their big love languages too. Like they love 
public affection, public displays of affection. They like to hold hands, kiss on you um, while, you know, being outside, while you're out, especially like for day nights, they're going to have their arms wrapped around you, you know, just wanting to be up under your skin, literally inhaling you, basically. Um, And when they don't feel that physical touch from you, like if you rub their head or you just like touch on them whenever you walk past or just even giving them a kiss, they sometimes might feel like, you know, you might not be attracted to them or they want that physical touch like often. So whether it's just like a good morning kiss and like have a good day at work, babe, and you give them a kiss and a hug, they love that. They really enjoy it. I'm also feeling like they like, you know, massages and just little ways to feel love and like you touching on them makes them feel like that you're attracted to them, that you find them sexy and you irresistible in a way. And that could be something that you want from them as well, too. But they also enjoy like sitting close to each other and I just get this person loves kisses like they that's their biggest thing they love kisses and just the intimacy with you um as well and it doesn't necessarily have to just be just sex but more so being intimate and close to one another um because the physical touch helps us build a stronger bond with our partner and when you think about like the hormone oxytocin um it helps relieve the stress and the loneliness and the feelings and neglect. So when we release that hormone and we have it going within our body, it feels good and it makes us feel like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm happy. I feel good when I'm with this person. Like, obviously, you're going to feel good by yourself, but then you feel re- even better when you're with your person and you feel connected and loved and appreciated as well. That's what I'm getting. All right. So now let's get into the... Um, the oracle cards so our first card is listen and reflect sometimes what a person needs is not a wise mind that speaks but a patient heart that listens i feel like i mentioned that earlier something was like balance maybe when i look at this justice cards because they're in like therapy in this card and so like having the balance of listening and reflecting not just always talking but listening to the person first Next, we have safe place. There's nothing like being able to let your guard down and know that you are protected by your partner's love. Beautiful. And I feel that this is connected to the idea of them wanting stability, them wanting a safe home, a safe place, and that consistency, knowing that when they come home or when they're around you, you are their safe place. You are home to them, right? (laughs) Look at that quality time. So I think that was one of the love languages that we mentioned, quality time. But quality time means putting away the phone, literally clearing your brain of anything distracting so you can ensure that your partner is your number one focus. So yeah, quality time is huge here. Okay, inner fears. As you face your inner fears, you recognize what is holding you back from attracting a healthy and loving relationship with others and yourself. So maybe this person has been to therapy and um, they talked about it, of how they have this fear. Like, what if I become like my parents? You know, um, what if I struggle with communication? And I feel that therapy has helped them get rid of that fear and to learn how to communicate effectively and in a healthy way so when they are with you they know what to do they have like the like the warning um signals for them to like okay wait a minute don't do that like remember we have to use our words we have to learn how to you know listen and reflect first and then we respond so kind of like that We have getting to know each other. Enjoy discovering new commonalities, goals, and dreams as you get to learn more about each other. So I love that we actually do have the dreams card here too. So I'm seeing a lot of um, building your dreams with each other. So like you're building your dream home, um, getting your dream like cars together. There's a lot of similarities that you both share and that allows you to kind of invest in these dreams easily because you have the same vision. Oh, look at that. Love. I love it. We have love language. Learning and understanding each other's love languages are essential to meet each other's emotional needs. I love that that came out in your deck. So um, with this, I feel that they're saying that the time that you spend investing and understanding each other and learning each other's love languages helps you all become the best version 
of a couple that you you feel and know that you will be I'm also getting it will strengthen the intimacy with one another because I'm also getting this person as a visual person like they want to be stimulated mentally and emotionally as well too so like yeah they you know they love they sex they love sex and physical touch but they also want to have that emotional and mental connection with you as well and that could be something that you mirror you know and that is why you two make a great match so now let us get into some messages from this person so we're going to start off with cherries enchantress um enchanted embraced cards and then we'll get into my love notes as well so let's see what we get wow i live with you in my dream so once again this person like i said they are a mental person so they could have some strong air placements in their chart um for some of you i'm getting aquarius and libra energy um like placements but yeah i feel that this person they like the the tea so maybe you like your texting during the day and you're building that anticipation up when it's time to get you know busy in the bedroom and i feel that this person also connects with you in their dreams like that's how in sync you are because you have built this strong mental and energetic connection with one another okay let's see what else we get we have i can show you the world beautiful so maybe this person has traveled around the world um they want to experience the world with you because we do have the six of swords here too and that's about movement that's about travel let's see what else we have you are wonderful all right and then let's get another one okay we have these two fell out how wonderful life is with you in the world that's beautiful oh i feel you in my bones this person feels your energy so the energy between you two is like off the charts. All right, now let's get some of my divine love messages. All right, so we have, we should talk about things and work it out. You are gorgeous, pure beauty. I surrender my heart to you. I wish that I could hold you in my arms. So kind of like that physical touch energy makes me think of that stability card. I'm gonna bring it back up. Put it over there. And even in the passion card too, cause like he has his arms wrapped around her and she has her arms wrapped around him. You have the key to my heart. And then I respect, look at that. I respect you. I will honor you. I will cherish our love. So respect here is definitely in the forefront for them. The respect and communication is big here. And I feel that honestly, it's essential in relationships to be respectful of your partner in all ways and for them to be respectful of you, you know? So now let's get some original love notes. The version one. Let's see what we get. We have, you are everything that I could ever want or need. I love that. So this, once again, kind of highlights the energy of both of you complimenting each other and being what each other needs and wants. And that goes into understanding the love languages. When you understand your love language and your person's love language, then you're able to love each other the correct way and the right way that they need to be loved. Because no one is the same. Um, love is bespoke, you know, in a way that, you can't love a person the same way you love somebody before. Like you just can't because everybody is different. Everybody has different experiences, different traumas, different pain, um, different highs and different lows. And so when you learn each other, then you are able to fully love each other the way that they deserve. Let's see what else we get. We have, oh my gosh, I want to hold you in my arms so badly. Didn't we just get that? Yes. So physical touch, physical touch, physical touch is huge. Let's see what else we get. We have, I'm ready to take you on a romantic date. So that quality time energy, you got all of me. I belong to you. 
don't leave me please stay so kind of like that stability once again they definitely dealt with in and out energy lack of consistency and a lack of a safe place and so your presence definitely is valued and they're going to make sure that they do everything to respect that and to honor that and i feel like that could be what you want from them too okay let's see what else we get Let's get two more. I guess the light I see in you is what you see in me. And then you and I will always meet somewhere in between. So kind of finding that middle ground, that balance, because we did have the justice card, which is Libra um, energy. And I feel that that's just letting us know that no matter what the argument or disagreement is, there's always going to come to there. You're always going to come to a middle ground where both parties will find something that fits what both of you want. Right. Um, so let's say. I'm, I don't know why, but I'm thinking about money and budgets. You know, somebody wants something like a house. And you're like, oh, I want this house. And let's say it's over the number that they want it. But it has everything that you want and things that they like too. Like you guys come to a, a middle number that works for the both of you and or you find something that works for the both of you, basically. So it's kind of like your partners in this relationship. You're not, you know, there's not like a boss and employee. It is literally partnership. And I think that is another essential um, trait that matters in relationships as well. Okay. So that is what I have for those that selected this tile. I hope you all enjoyed your reading. This was amazing. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. Feel free to let me know if it resonated with you. And just know that it's okay if your love languages have changed over time or if they're the same. Because as you grow, you start to learn things um, more about you. Like You learn more about yourself and also areas of growth. And I feel that you and this person definitely complement each other and it looks promising because you both value respect communication consistency and stability in um romance and that matters a lot okay thank you once again i appreciate the love and the support and i wish you all the best Alrighty, this will be for those that selected the green door so we're gonna go through the cards um, first and then we're going to get a feel for the love languages and then at the very end I will get some love notes from this person as well so we're going to start off with whispers of love oracle cards all right so our first card is number 31 love makes the difference love helps heal past hurts and provides a sense of security and self-worth Number 19, express love through gifts. So we have an idea what the next or one of the love languages. A small token of love can convey great appreciation. Number six, be willing to express love. Express love to receive love. Number 17, have patience. Love is patient and kind, always. All right, let's get some tarot cards. So we have Empress, or the Empress. We have the Hangman. We have the Five of Swords. And then we have the Ten of Swords. Okay. And then I'm going to go through my Melon and Romance Oracle cards. And at the end, I'll go through the Black Hollywood Romance Stars Oracle deck and then get some love notes as well. So for these cards, we have Focus.
pleasure. Let's put this over there. Pleasure. Engagement. And then gifts and offers. So we definitely know what one of the love languages will be. So actually, let's start with that one. The gifts and offers and, you know, express love through gifts. So literally receiving gifts is one of their love languages. Um, but I get theirs is like a spin on it. So in a sense of them receiving gifts, but also being able to give you gifts as well. So they don't want like the fanciest things, you know, in the world, but they do like a nice gift or something that's very thoughtful. And know that gifts don't have to be expensive. It's all about the meaning behind the gift, right? So remembering um, that everything special doesn't have to be purchased in a store or purchased online. It could literally be something that you created, that you sung, that you written for them, or, you know, something that they just enjoy. And when you show your appreciation for them through thoughtful and meaningful gifts, it hits home for them. It means so much to them. For example, if their favorite treat is a Reese cup and you buy them one just because that will mean the world to them. You know, you're paying attention to the little things that matter to them. You're showing like, hey, I watch you. I notice the things that you love. I notice the things that are important to you and you know that help you become the better version of yourself or just make you feel good so let me give you something to contribute to that right um and i get that they also enjoy giving gifts too so they might buy you jewelry or you know buy you things that you like as well so it's kind of like that balance of them wanting to give gifts but also wanting to feel the um, appreciated with the gift as well it's like for holidays their birthdays and just like a just because type of thing too um, let's say they do a really great job at work and you know they come home and tell you like getting them something small like a token of your appreciation um, will let them know that they are important and that they they're being noticed and heard and that's what I'm getting with that as well um, in terms of like another love language I am strongly getting that words of affirmation is their love language. Like it is their top love language, but it comes with the form of communication as well too. So not just like, oh, here and I love you all the time, but also just communication. I get that it's also your love language as well. But for this, I am getting this person comes from a place where honestly, um, they were not heard as a child and as a teenager. Um, they felt voiceless. They felt silence. They may also come from a home, a divorce home, because we do see like a divorce certificate here and we do have the Ten of Swords or just a single parent household where um, it was a lot of abusive language and yelling and kind of aggressiveness in a way. So I feel like they desire to have a connection where there is no abusive language or yelling. They never got a chance to kind of witness this healthy relationship, but this has motivated them to become, to not become their parents and not to have something like that because they know it affects the children. They know that it hurts the children. Seeing their parents argue, seeing, um, you know, unhealthy relationships and ab hearing abusive like, relation or language um, as well, because that takes a toll on you mentally and emotionally. And so there might have been times where like they felt um, alone in silence and because of what they experienced as a child and as a teenager, they know that's not something they want to have their kids go through as well. Um, I do see this person has actually had like some counseling on this issue and they learned great ways to communicate, especially in a respectful manner. Because um, maybe they saw their father, you know, disrespect their mother or their mother disrespect their father. But there's like they wanted to learn a healthy way to communicate. So keeping kindness and respecting the forefront of your conversations, especially during difficult ones, is essential here. And it keeps the contempt and anger or frustrations in check because you don't want to disrespect anyone. You don't want to be disrespected. So like there's ways to communicate and get your point across, even when you're upset. And I think sometimes we 
you know, we might go to the, the easiest route, which is like yelling or, you know, using curse words, cursing someone out, or even just like giving someone a silence treatment, because in a way that is, um, it can, it depends on like how often you do it and when you do it, but it can be considered narcissistic or toxic because when you give someone a silence treatment for a long period of time, what you're saying to them is that I'm not going to respond to what you're telling me. So if someone, if you literally pour out your heart and someone doesn't talk to you, they don't respond to you. Like they are in a way gaslighting you and being toxic because it's like you're trying to have a conversation with them. So it's okay to have a moment where like you, you silence yourself because you're reflecting and you're listening and trying to get your thoughts together. But then there's a difference between doing that and actually like, oh, they're telling me how they feel or they're doing something that I don't like. So let me not talk. I'm just going to like silence, give them a silence treatment instead of like actually communicating with them like, hey, what you said was hurtful or disrespectful. I don't like that. It made me feel this way. We need to figure out a better way to communicate or like, you know, resolve this issue so it doesn't happen again. Um, it's something else that I feel like this person thinks about from time to time. So they don't like silent treatments. They don't like ghosting people um, as well. So if you have that fear of being ghosted, this is the person that won't ghost you because they value communication. Like that is huge to them. It, I'm, I'm getting like this emotional feeling because they've gone through so much hardship when it comes to not hearing healthy communication and um, words of affirmation. I love you. I'm proud of you. You know, you're a great person. You're loved. You're kind. Like they struggle with that or had struggled with that in the past. And I get that um, they value those words of affirmation. They might have had a mother that didn't express their love for them a lot and when you shower them with love, it, it makes them feel good. It makes them really feel like it, it makes their inner child smile, if that makes sense. Um, and I think that that's very healing for them too. Like, of course they tell themselves words of affirmation and positive things, but it, it hits different when you hear it from somebody that you love or that you're interested in, because it's just a different type of feel feeling that they, um, that they never knew that they've experienced before. So that's what I'm getting um, with that one. Let's see what else do I feel. I'm also getting the vibe that, okay, so this love language is not a love language in the categories, like those five that we listed earlier, um, but patience. Patience, patience, patience is a love language um, for them. And it's also one for you too, I'm getting. And having patience is essential because no one is perfect. You know, this person requires time to process their thoughts and their words. So they might, so they make sure that everything comes across how they intend it to, to come across. You know, when having a conversation with each other, make sure you give each other the, the time and space to process. You should be able to give freely from your heart into your person's heart. And they should be able to do the same with you. And it's okay to take time to build that connection and getting to know each other. It's about you two and no one else. So in a sense of being patient with one another, but also being patient with yourself and allowing yourself to kind of open up and to... Um, be willing to express love and be willing to understand each other because you're not going to understand a person that you meet within a month. It takes years to get to people and get to understand people. And it's just due to the fact that we're all healed, that we're all healing. We, as we heal one thing, we got to work on something else. Like you're never done healing. You're always working on something and becoming a better version of yourself and addressing things in the long run. I feel that with this person, um, you're going to be experiencing that. So you're going to be needing that patient and that, that patience and that grace, and they're going to need it as well. And it's like also just giving each other the space to understand and to clear your thoughts and to clear your mind because they value, like I said before, respect and communication. And so if you say something to them, that's very deep and heavy, give them a few minutes to process it or give them, you know, a day to process it. But it's not like they're leaving a the conversation. They're like, they're going to be like, hey, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. I understand. 
that you that this is important to you. So let me give me a couple of minutes to respond to kind of get my thoughts together so I can respond to you in the best version of myself and make sure that I'm addressing the issue. Like they'll put the time aside to reflect on what you're talking about, to understand where you're coming from. And you should do that with them as well, because I feel that this is going to be a um, strong communication type of relationship. Like you're going to have those days and those nights where you're just talking about random stuff, but also things that, you know, that are important to talk about at that time. And it makes your connection stronger. It makes it um, healthier because you know how to communicate. And then when you, you know, have kids with one another, if you want to have kids, your kids see the importance of communication and they, they see it because their parents are modeling that well in front of them right they're not yelling at each other and cursing each other out and being disrespectful which is causing trauma to the kids they're like wow mommy and daddy like they might not always agree with one another but um they know how to communicate to find that difference you know or mommy and mommy or daddy and daddy however you identify yourself and your partner they see the value of communicating and also that's helpful for them when they get to a space when they're trying to communicate with you guys you know like they will understand it and know what to say and have like ask their questions or to express themselves which is key because you want your kids to understand communication like the earlier you teach them the better and of course you know they're going to lose some things as they get older because you know they're going to be around their friends and they're going to be you know, involved in social media and stuff like that. So they, they see different models, but it's like when they see their parents do it well and see how effective it is, they're going to keep those core foundations with them. And that's going to help them over time. Okay. Um, I'm also seeing physical touch being huge as well too. So they love physical touch. They love the intimacy. They love being seduced. And, you know, like when you, are in the moment, they're going to focus all on you and make sure that you're pleased and that um, you receive the pleasure and the attention of love. They're also very comfortable with public displays of affection. So holding hands, kissing on each other, all of that. And, you know, they look forward to the kisses and the intimacy with you. That's something that they just enjoy. Um, they like being up under you, holding you, caressing your body. And knowing that the physical touch strengthens your bond and because it's like this, you know, you're both able to communicate what you want in the bedroom. So if your partner wants something and you want something a little bit different, like you're able to kind of find that middle ground and try it out and express it and you feel comfortable to do so. Because some people don't feel comfortable expressing what they want in the bedroom with their partner, which is unfortunate. But I think that with your person, you're going to be comfortable to do that. All right. So now let's get into the Oracle cards. The last batch of the oracle cards so we have <laughs> communication a conversation is on the horizon someone is planning to reach out be ready to express yourself so highlighting communication once again words of affirmation okay let's put that there slow down just because we want something so bad doesn't mean we have to rush into it take time to talk with your partner or self to reflect on what is best see this once again highlights the idea of them needing that patience you needing the patience to make sure that you're being respectful being reflective and not just um you know responding immediately because sometimes people say like if you say like oh i'm not happy and then they just start flipping out that is not healthy at all. You want to understand why this person is not happy. They could literally be like, I'm not happy because you keep leaving the toilet seat up. But you didn't flip out and went off on them, at least to a different argument, at least to something deeper and worse. So slowing down, being patient, reflecting first, and then responding. Next, we have soulmate. The person you are inquiring about is your soulmate. That's the sense of familiarity and comfort you feel is confirmation. So this person is your soulmate, the perfect match for you. Next, we have security. What is yours will always be yours. This love is secured by the divine. So once again, also that connects to like the security of a relationship and knowing that we are in this. We're not going to just run away when things get hard. We're not going to run away because we had an argument or a disagreement the other day. We're going to make sure that um, we figure something out that works for the best of us which is key. 
I like this. We have clarity. Someone finally sees the answer that was always in front of in front of their eyes. The vision is clear. Therefore, what is to come shall be clear too. So I feel that comes with the period of reflection, the period of being patient, the period of um, understanding and listening, right? And so when you have that, you're able to see things for what they are. You're able to understand your partner easier. And um, it's clear of what each other's needs are and how to meet those needs. And then the last one we have is forgive and heal. As you forgive and heal, your love life becomes brighter and healthier. So I feel that this person definitely has had some type of counseling because they wanted to forgive their parents. They wanted to forgive um, anyone that contributes to um, the pain and the trauma they might have experienced as a child and growing up. And I think that this is something um, you could be working on as well or have been considering. So definitely um, know that both of you are working on that. All right, so now let us get some love notes. So we're gonna start off with Cherry's um, Enchanted Embrace. I'm gonna shuffle on the side so I don't mess up the cards. All right, let's see what we get. Okay, first card, I love you. <laughs> I love you, the expressions of love. Words of affirmation. I'll put that on being willing to express love. Okay, let's see what else we get. We have, I feel you in my bone. Ooh, I want to do bad things with you. So kind of with that pleasure card, like I said, physical touch, physical touch. And then you are sweet perfume, like a desert rose or like a dessert rose or a desert rose. I'm curious to know, let's get one more. Let's see, let's get one more um, of her cards. Like a desert rose. Like a desert rose. There is a place. Will you meet me there? Maybe there's a special place that you all um, will just have like as your regular spot that you go to. When it comes to like date nights. And then you just wear this special perfume. Alright, so now let's get some of my divine love notes. We should talk about everything and clear the air. So it's funny that this card comes out or like something about communication and talking comes out in all of the piles. And I think that's very befitting because I think each pile had words of affirmation being one of the love languages, whether it be like the viewers or their person. And so I feel that, I mean, essentially that is important with relationships. You have to have some type of good communication in a relationship if you want it to be healthy and good communication varies it's different for every couple but the idea that communication is the core is the foundation of a healthy relationship next we have you deserve the world honey so it's like kind of with the gift giving they want to give you the world they want to give you things um, to show their appreciation and love for you and like I said it doesn't always have to be from a store or from an online shop it can literally be something that they create like let's say your person is an artist they paint you things or they paint you like they make an image and they paint you as like um, their what do you call it um, like a muse in a way but also like their they're just hobby that like they enjoy painting you drawing you Let's see what else we get. 
I lost you once and I'm not going to lose you again. So I feel like this is for some of you, it might be a person of your past that's coming back. But I think that we got a card. Let's see. Like soulmate. Soulmate being a past can be a past life connection. Um, so that can be related to a past life. Let's see what else we get. We have we have such a strong connection. So the the bond here is limitless, everlasting, to infinity. Next we have I want to be the reason you smile. Beautiful. I really do miss you. So some of you might know this person already. Um, or this would just be like the past life energy missing you. Okay. Let's get some more love notes. Let's see. We have, look at that, will you marry me? Beautiful. All right, let's see what else we get. I think something flipped. Um, or maybe not, all right. It's like I see it, but I don't. <laughs> let's see. I feel like I see something flipped. Or maybe it does when I start shuffling and then it just disappears. All right, let's try it again. I'm in a better headspace now. So maybe that's due to like counseling and therapy. You are my weakness. You are my sweet spot. I wasn't ready, but now I'm ready. I'm ready for you. I like that. Let's get a few more. This is why I like shuffling on the side. Okay. It's something about the way you stare into my eyes. Beautiful. Okay. So these are your love messages and the love languages that are connected to you and this person. So overall, I feel that this is a really good fit in terms of like, you know, what some of your love languages are and what theirs are. And also know that your love languages can change over time or they can literally stay the same. Um, so don't you know, worry if you don't see one of your love languages, but like, remember, this is more so focused on them. Um, we just have like a feel for some energies kind of being connected to like both of you guys. But overall, I think that this is a great fit and a lot of healing here has happened um, on their part, which is good because you want a partner that has been working on themselves and working to resolve issues, you know, and traumas. And I'm sure that you're doing that as well, which is great. So congratulations on your strong connection and use this information as a way to learn more about yourself. And if you feel inclined to take the, the quiz, the uh, love languages quiz, definitely do it to just to see if anything else shows up. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed your reading. Thank you so much. And I wish you all the best.